All right, let's talk about the economy. Inflation rose again today, higher than expected. The Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index, or CPI, highlights the ongoing struggle for the Federal Reserve to meet its target goals of bringing inflation down to 2%. Inflation climbed 3.5% compared to last March. That's faster than February's 3.2% pace. So what does this mean for interest rates? Let's bring in Eddie Gifford, Wealth Advisor at Tactive. Eddie, good to have you back. So I was wishing, I was hoping so much that the Federal Reserve would indeed lower interest rates this year. You know, the Fed chair in, indicated three cuts, possibly in the summer. Now, last week I mentioned this, the summer or the job, the jobs, the good job numbers uh, were an indication that that might not happen as expected. And then today's inflation number farther away from that target 2%. Another example of why the Fed might not cut as teased. What do you think? Yeah, the Fed keeps trying to tell us that they're going to cut, but the data is just not telling us that they are. Uh, when you look at the data and you see the fact that inflation is higher, we're 36 months over 3% now. This is the second straight monthly increase. We've got four months in a row now where CPI is coming hotter than expected. And then we have like over half of the components in the CPI that are above 4%. So when you look at all of that, you're like, there is no way they can cut unless something breaks. And, and when I when I say break, that would mean like a pretty significant recession that we would fall into. And it just isn't looking like that. And, and what nobody is telling you is that everything that's happening is inflationary. All the spending is happening. That's inflationary. More workers, that's inflationary. Uh, so what, all these spending things that exactly government spending primarily. Okay. So, you know, we, we, we get this stimulus deal or not stimulus deal. We get this, uh, spending deal and then we continue to not have a limit on our united states credit cards so to speak and so everything just keeps spiraling out of control and and you know at least if you're a business like you run into a situation you only have so much credit that's not what we're dealing with as a country right now and so they're just digging us deeper and deeper and deeper into this potential runaway inflation and it looks very eerily similar to the 70s <laughs> it, it does and it's scary but what about consumer spending as well credit card debt has hit an all-time record high yeah, that's the thing when I say, hey, you know, if, if something breaks, because we do have high for, foreclosures uh, indicated by the FHA, we do have mass credit card debt. Uh, we do have a lot of people that are not making student loan payments, even though they're supposed to be. And all of those things are instead trickling into the economy with more credit and more spending. Uh, so when and or if that thing blows up, it's going to be very, very bad. That's your deflationary event. Yeah, it, you know, the, the whole entire market goes down by 50%. We'll get inflation back to 2% that way. But other than that, it's just going to continue to run until it breaks. So the cost of housing and gas is still expensive. What about wages? People, people still feel more financially strained now. Your take on that? Yeah, so wages have been increasing and, and, you know, everyone's talking about these stock market highs, but when you actually account for the inflation stacking event over the last three years, uh, the wages are not keeping up and most people are actually behind on their portfolio. And so we've seen basically wealth reduction when it comes to portfolios. And then we see wages not actually stacking at the same pace that inflation has over the last three years. So it makes sense that people are struggling more and more. They're using more and more credit card debt. And eventually those limits are going to run out. And when that happens, uh, maybe we get a break, but nobody wants to see a break. We don't want to see we don't want to see another deep recession like we did in 08, 09, but the longer that they kick this can down the road, the worse it's going to be. Yeah. What about core inflation? You taking out food and energy prices that rose as well. And the Fed really looks closely at that number. Yeah, core inflation was 3.8 uh, compared to 3.7% expected. That's still almost double 2%. Mm -hmm. And so the, getting that number down to 2% just seems like highly unlikely, especially this year, maybe, maybe even over the next two to three years. So uh, unfortunately, we're in this situation where, yeah, interest rates are probably going to stay higher for longer unless something breaks. So either scenario, it's just not a good thing for Americans in general. Ugh, all right. Uh, thanks for the news. Not necessarily good news. Eddie Gifford, Wealth Advisor with Tactive.
Appreciate your time today, as always. Thank you. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.